This module is Advanced Spa Therapies. Our outline today is History of Spas, Spa Therapies, Massage, Basic Principles and Practices, Indications and Benefits to Relaxation Massage, Contraindications of Massage, and a short history for, of spas. In Roman Empire, social bathing was also an important networking tool as in Egypt and the word spa in Latin is the acronym of salus per aquam or health from water. Spa is also the name of a small Belgian village where hot mineral springs were used by Roman soldiers to treat aching muscles and wounds from, from a battle of Mesopotamia and old Greece. Even before the bath mineral springs was discovered, Roman citizens bathed daily in now famous Roman baths. This is a picture of what a Roman bath would have looked like in that time. Um, would have been either limestone or marble and very, you know, very ornate. During the reign of Caesar Augustus, which was 27 BC to 14 AD, there was approximately 170 baths in Rome. Many of these were public baths who were primarily built and used by Roman soldiers. By 43 AD, citizens of Rome began to view baths as a way of providing rest, relaxation, and solace to all people, not just those weary of war. So they went from soldiers to the general population. In 70 AD, the Romans built a spa around a hot spring at Bath, England, and a temple nearby to honor the goddess Minerva. By the year 300 AD, there were over 900 baths throughout the empire. The oldest Roman spa is still in existence today and is located in Murano, Italy. This is how it would it probably does look, a replication of how it looks. Baths were an important part of daily life, both for Roman men and women of all social classes, and the ancient Romans managed to transform it into an art. While members of the Roman upper class frequently built private baths in their homes or villas, they still favored public bathhouses. These large public baths were uh, known as thermae, thermae and were fr uh, frequently spanned several city blocks. There was a fee for using the thermae, uh, but it was minimal and could be afforded by most Romans. A visit to the bath would traditionally last several hours and include exercise, bathing, and socializing. Roman baths often included gardens, libraries, or reading rooms, restaurants, bars, marketplaces, museums, or theaters. Bathers moved from one room to another at a leisurely pace and enjoying the company of their fellow Romans. In the 11th century, the king's bath was built over the ruins of the Temple of Minerva at Bath. By the Elizabethan era, the popularity of the hot springs at Bath had increased greatly. At this time, the use of spas was becoming more widely accepted, attracting many visitors who were searching for cures of various illnesses and ailments. So from just bathing and socializing, they were using them for their therapeutic benefits. The growth and development continued into the 17th and 18th century when spas were also frequently built in secluded mountain towns, providing visitors the majestic view. So it was like a getaway to go and to unwind, have a peaceful scenic view of the mountains and nature and get your therapeutic benefits of the waters. It also became a, a practice for spas to be staffed by medical professionals who prescribed and carefully monitored the treatments um, provided for each visitor. A lot of uh, spas in Europe, there are nurses and uh, doctors that are there to check on clients who come in. 
A lot of time the elderly go there for treating their arthritis um, and other ailments they have because they claim that the therapeutic baths from the mineral springs um, alleviate their arthritis and aches and pains. So because they have other ailments like high blood pressure um, and diabetes, they have to be monitored by a doctor or nurse to make sure that they are not um, overdoing it. The treatment in this time consisted, consisted primarily of either soaking or in or drinking of the water. These spas were tremendously successful and they grew rapidly, eventually expanding to add restaurants and casinos. In North America, Native Indians were also enjoying the benefits of hot spring therapies as well. Native Americans bathed in mineral springs to enhance their physical and spiritual health. In present day New York, the Mohawk Indians use hot springs for their healing properties. The oldest spring known to have been used by the Mohawks is the Saratoga Hot Springs, meaning the place of the medicine waters of Great Spirit. And as you can see in the picture, the waters here are, um, are warm, they're heated, and it's usually due to either volcanic or um, the the heat coming up from the core of the earth and heating up uh, the water. Usually they say there's like cracks or um, in the crust and what happens is the heat escapes up and so do the other properties like um, trace minerals and stuff that come up and heat up the water. In uh, 1790 the Saratoga Hot Springs began offering both spa treatments and accommodations to its visitors. As America expanded westward, new mineral springs were discovered and that prompted the development of an elaborate new classification system for developing spas based on the study of the geography, so where it was located, geology, what kind of rock, minerals, what minerals were found in that rock, and what climate you were dealing with, climatology. By European standards, American spas are still in their early in their infancy infancy and the difference between American and European spas are many like we said here spas are more for um, treating and pampering whereas in Europe they're there for therapeutic purposes traditionally Europeans have viewed spas as a venue for the treatment of present illness and also the prevention of future ailments in addition, Europeans also place special emphasis on the importance of spas in helping visitors relax by combating the stresses of everyday life. In contrast, traditional American spas have maintained their focus on wellness, attracting individuals who already are healthy with a program in nutrition, exercise, and beauty. More recently, American spas have begun to adopt numerous new programs, which include meditation and spirituality. So they're retreats where you go and you unwind, you de-stress. While the origins of spas are rooted in the healing waters of natural hot springs, the focus of spas around the world, including in the United States and Canada, has shifted. Advances in technology and medicine have developed new treatments that have all but replaced treatments that are more traditional. Now these are some spa therapies. This is what we call a scotch hose and what it is, it's uh, the machine that she has here takes the water from the springs um, and or the therapeutic waters and it puts it through a high pressure which comes out the hose then the client is further away and you basically spray the client with the hose. The spraying what it does is it um, stimulates the lymphatic system by the pressure when it hits the skin. It also um, deposits the, lets the skin absorb the trace elements of those therapeutic waters um, that are there. Now hydrotherapies use water for pain relief and uh, treating illness and the term hydro which means water and of course therapy is the treatment. Hydrotherapy has been very popular in Europe using jet massages, mineral baths, scotch hoses, and Swiss showers. 
So this is a scotch hose. It's kind of like the pressure you would get from a fire uh, hose, a fire truck hose. A Swiss shower is a shower with lots of heads. Um, you get them from all sides, so top and all four sides. So you would be sitting, standing inside this shower and you would be bombarded by the water. Again, the jets from these water, um, the shower heads here, what they're gonna do is they're gonna stimulate the lymphatic system get all of this uh, lymph circulating to detoxify you and the properties of the water would be absorbed by the skin. With the Vichy shower it's different because you're lying on a wet bed or so the client lies on a wet bed and the water comes down from the ceiling from these like one of these shower bars which would be on top which go directly onto the body. Now massage. Massage is the manipulation of superficial surface and deep layers of the muscle and its connective tissues to improve the function, aid in the healing process, and promote relaxation and well-being. The word comes from the French massage, friction of kneading, or from Arabic masa, meaning uh, to touch, feel, or handle, or from Latin masa, meaning mass dough, a Greek verb, maso, to handle, touch, to work with the hands to knead dough. Massage involves acting on the manipulating the body with pressure, structured, unstructured, stationary, or moving, tension, motion, or vibrations, which are done manually or mechanical aids. Most traditional massage is done with um, hands. Some use their feet for pressure. Now, target massage targets tissues that may include muscles, your tendons, ligaments, fascia, your skin, of course, joints, or other connective tissues, as well as the lymphatic vessels or organs of the gastrointestinal system. So when you're massaging, you're actually targeting a lot of things at once. Now, obviously, a massage therapist, a registered massage therapist that is specifically trained just on massage, she would be doing the more deeper tissue, fascia, and joint type of uh, joint, tendon, ligament type of massage. As estheticians, all we are allowed to do is superficial or relaxation massage. So we are not to go deep into the tissues. If your client requires this, then they have to go see a registered massage therapist. Massage can be applied with the hands, fingers, elbows, forearm, and feet. So it's, it's touching, right? Anybody touching. There are over 80 different recognized massage modalities, so different types of um, uh, massage. And the most cited reason for introducing massage as a therapy has have been clients demand and perceived clinical effectiveness clients love the way it feels anybody who uh, massages you even if it's your own um, loved ones you notice you always feel relaxed and it feels good now massage 3000 BC Chinese written about massage in their in their documents 2500 BC Egyptians created reflexology which is point pressure on the feet, hands, ears. Um, 2000 BC, first writing about massage, and in 1800s, the Ayurveda Art of Life book that included massage techniques. Now in India, the focus was on a sensual massage aspect, whereas Ayurveda is a code of life and that deals with rebirth, renunciation, salvation, soul, and purpose of life, maintenance of mental health, and prevention and treatment of disease. Now, basic principles of practice, health history, and client consultation is very important because we need to make sure that there are no contraindications, which we'll discuss further down um, before we can treat them. Assessment of the treatment, what kind of treatment are they looking for? and review indications and contraindications to treatment. Now, indications and benefits to relaxation massage. One is pain relief. 
as we you know if somebody's suffering from a sore joint it always feels good when you massage it because you're stimulating the blood to the area and you're flushing out any of those um, um, lactic acid that's keeping it tight anxiety it helps us relax when we get massaged it helps with depression because the sense of touch gives us a sense of um, I guess well-being and it helps um, helps depression improves immune system because we are massaging we are moving the lymphatic system so we're removing the um, the lymphatics or the all the impurities out of the body um, and getting new fresh fluids to come through increased blood flow to nourish and feed our muscles and bones now contraindications which means uh, who we cannot work on for relaxation massage which would acute which would be include anybody with any acute inflammation so inflammation anywhere on the body really bad inflammation broken bones or over on the non um, consolidating fracture so if a if somebody has a broken bone or a recent injury and it hasn't healed properly or is still under the healing don't massage Anybody who's had recent surgery, we don't want to be massaging. Inflammation of the skin could be eczema, dermatitis, any of those conditions. We want to avoid rubbing the skin there. Varicocytis or varicose veins over sites with deep vein thrombosis. So var varicose veins are veins, the green veins that bulge out of the skin on our legs and our uh, usually the legs. Now, local contagious conditions like um, herpes or um warts anything like that we don't want to be massaging blood clots uh, we have to be careful because if they're prone to blood clots we could have one traveling throughout the blood and cause more problems open wounds or sores you don't want to cause any infection uh, local irritable skin conditions again you don't want to be touching anything that's irritated undiagnosed lumps so if they don't know what the lump is and they haven't seen it with the doctor don't touch it acute lesions so sores around the body we don't touch malignancy is cancerous cells over the site of active cancer we don't want to be touching any skin infections tumors um, any rheumatoid arthritis uh, flare-ups because rheumatoid arthritis is the autoimmune disease of um, arthritis where the joints swell up and disfigure and can be very very uh, painful any recent burns we don't want to be touching as well as anybody who has phlebitis again more uh, vein issues in conclusion spa is the name of a small village where hot mineral springs were used by Roman soldiers and the soldiers liked the results that when they got back to Rome they built many of these them across the country to help heal wounded soldiers from the soldiers it was open to the general population to use which then got um, very elaborate with restaurants libraries even theaters and the native Indians were using the healing waters in North America in New York State and then moved west and today's spas in Europe involve a doctor and a nurse to monitor the vital signs of the patrons using waters uh, for therapeutic and healing purposes in North America today, spas are seen as a getaway for the rich uh, to pamper themselves. Some are located in hotels, spas, and casinos, or destination retreats, usually to uh, for fit individuals who want to experience the water therapies. And today's treatments use scotch hoses, Vichy showers, or Vichy showers, or Swiss showers. Massage is a more popular form of treatment for the mass of the population as it is more convenient and comfortable uh, sorry affordable for most people thank you